Okay, hi everyone, and welcome back to Organic Chemistry on YouTube. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the hydration of alkenes. So these are reactions that turn alkenes into alcohols, and we'll be using the oxymercuration conditions to achieve that transformation. First of all, uh, this reaction involves the addition of a Lewis acidic mercury containing compound to an alkene. Uh, this is gonna favor the Markovnikov addition of an alcohol to an alkene. So that means that the alcohol is going to be adding to the more substituted end of that alkene. Finally, mechanistically, this is a stepwise process, and it's stepwise because it involves the development of a partial positive charge at the more substituted end of that alkene. So here's an example that I've written out. Uh, this involves a dimethylated alkene uh, in the presence of mercuric acetate, and first followed by sodium borohydride as a second step. And this um, affords quite a high selectivity for the Markovnikov product, with a 98% yield for that Markovnikov product. First, mercuric acetate has a natural equilibrium towards the dissociated uh, mercuric acetate and acetate anion. And if you're not sure, the acetate anion looks like this. It's just the conjugate base of acetic acid. So then this uh, now Lewis acid will react with the Lewis base, which is the alkene, okay? And in this set of reactions, the alkene tends to be the Lewis base, the species that will donate electrons uh, to the Lewis acid. The Lewis acid will add to the mercury. Mercury has a whole lot of extra electrons and can also add to that alkene, and it forms this three-membered ring like this. Okay, so from this ring, then the second step is for sodium borohydride to add a hydride to this ring. Now, uh, that hydride can be added either at this blue carbon here, or it can be added at this green carbon here. So we should consider first some resonance structures to see which one of these might be favored, which site might be favored. So if we draw a resonance structure that breaks this bond, this carbon-mercury bond, then you have a structure that looks like this, right? Or if you break this carbon-mercury bond, then you get a structure that looks like this. Now these are just resonance structures. Um, so both of these, all of these electronic structures might be contributing to the overall electronic structure. Um, but we can compare that on the right, we have in black a tertiary uh, carbocation in a resonance form. And in the structure on the right, we have a primary carbocation as a resonance structure. So undoubtedly, the tertiary carbocation and the original structure that has a positive charge on the metal, the most electrophilic or electropositive element on the molecule, means that, um, that if there was a nucleophile to add, such as the hydride from sodium borohydride, it would add to that um, blue carbon on the right. Okay, and in this last step, um, water will attack the more substituted position Um, and the sodium borohydride will uh, help to substitute and remove that uh, mercury-containing compound. Okay, and then a final step involves just the deprotonation of that alcohol, that protonated alcohol, and um, arrive at, at the product. Okay, so questions you might want to ask in office hour of one, why does uh, sodium, why does mercuric acetate uh, dissociate um, from the dimer, from the version where there are two uh, acetates connected to one where there's just one? Uh, can there be a ligand that will work other than acetate? And three, uh, how selective is this reaction? So with that, thanks very much for tuning in. See you next time.